I took a bite and my whole body was just like, yes, this is what <laughs> I've been waiting for. Somehow, some part of me felt like so alive. I mean, it sounds like it's an extension of your soul, really, and an extension of the love that you have just for what you do and the people who are around you. People just eat it in minutes. And it's a process that takes, for me, 25 years and counting. When you can have something that is that sustaining and tastes that great, that, I mean, who can argue when there's something that magnificent on the plate? I love my team. And it's, it's my comfort place, the kitchen would be. Group of weirdos. After traveling, we had been traveling through South America for a month. And Whoa. by the time we got to your kitchen and had sat down, we were just exhausted and had eaten a lot of things that our body just did not enjoy. And mm. suddenly your food came to the table. And before I even put it into my mouth, I could feel the energy coming off of it. I could feel the love. I could feel the energy. I watched you guys back there smiling and laughing and having fun as you were making it. And then I took a bite and my whole body was just like, yes, this is what <laughs> I've been waiting for. This. And you give me goosebumps. <laughs> it's like you understand that it isn't just about putting food together. It's about the love that you put in the food, the energy you put in the food, uh -huh. and the way it comes together. So I just immediately wanted to know more about you. Like, what is your journey, Danny? What made you desire to say, I desire to show myself through food? Well, um, I get into the kitchen like I always say for the window because I wo I work in, in the salon. I was a waiter, and uh, one day, and in a French restaurant in here in Buenos Aires, um, I make the cook for the family, for the personnel, uh, for all the staff, and the chef, the head chef, try it and say, "Who cooked this?" And I say, I did it. He say, you want to work in the kitchen? I say, okay, I never did. I just to cook with my mom. And then the next day, I went to the to a place. I buy my all my disguise, of my kitchen disguise, <laughs> my superhero disguise. <laughs> no, costume, sorry, not disguise, costume. Sorry, my English is rough. Um, I buy all my costume of a chef and went to the kitchen and peel a lot of potatoes, a lot, like thousands, tons of potatoes and onions. And then I grow, grow, make my steps inside the kitchen, inside, inside, deeper and deeper. That was like 25 years ago. And I... Somehow, some part of me felt like so alive, so like it's my water to swim, like playing with knife and running with fire. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> like three years in the kitchen and I can imagine myself doing other things. Like I cannot uh, be in an office or or being in driving or nothing like my head always spin around the kitchen and how the ingredients want to mix it with each other and I'm in the middle like telling no 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 not so much of you just a little and just a little of you and playing with them it's like the best journey of my life in the kitchen and. That thing, it's like I'm a musician, so just have something like that. You prepare yourself with an instrument, you study, you practice and practice and practice. And then there's a, a chance in a song when you can improvise part. 
in just for one minute in the food is like that you, you put so much you the, since the moment the tomato is uh, the seed of the tomato is on the earth and then it's grow and the plant and everything to to then uh onto your plate it's like so much time and so much effort the plant did it for give you that fruit, for give you that thing and you take it and you try to, to, to get the best of it and put it on a plate and the people just eat it in minutes. And it's a process that takes for me twenty five years and counting, but like it's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of effort in for minutes. Just for minutes, it's like I love that. <laughs> I love that you put so much in one thing that it's like twenty, thirty bytes, no more. I love it. Yeah, it's magic there. And it is magic, especially if you take the time to honor what you just said. Like that plant mm. took so much time to create that fruit that you then take all that time to masterfully put together. And then when I have the honor of receiving all that effort that came down the line, if I just mindlessly put it in my face, then <laughs> I'm not honoring you or the plant. Right? <laughs> so then I had this opportunity to feel it before I even took it in. And then to taste that, you know, mm. when there's mindfulness on my part, then I have a great opportunity to honor all that came before. But then there's always that flip side, too, where, you know, sure. we've had many individuals who the food isn't raised well or it's not put together mm. with the same love you bring to the table. Then, you know, you can taste that equally as well. Of course. Right. So... How did you, is there anything that happened? Like you had mentioned the art behind you. That's your wife's art. Mm -hmm. She's got that yes. spark in her. Was there ever a moment where you just knew my art is food? Did it just hit or was it just always in there for you? I think there was always sleeping in me. Uh, I think I, I always have it just. I always enjoy the food. I love to read, and there's books from a Mexican writer, a girl, a woman, it's called Laura Esquivel. Uh, she 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 put uh, she wrote a book. It's called uh, like Water for Chocolate, or maybe the translation. Um, it's a girl who cooks, and she is sad. And she's making food sad, and when the family eat the food, the family cries, and she's angry and cooking. And when the people that eat that food, it's angry, gets angry, and get into a fight. And it's a pretty, pretty good book, short book. Uh, I read when I was a child, a pre-adolescent, and I really love it. And I think like that was the seed in my head that grew in a plant. That Give this cook <laughs> fruit, fruit cook <laughs> uh, to to the kitchens. Um, I think that maybe because I always love uh, to be in the kitchen. I always spend time in the kitchen with my mom. My mom was cooking. I stole things and run eating. Um, like I think I always like love the the kitchen. I always feel, feel comfortable in the kitchen. And being comfortable is not my speciality. <laughs> I, I'm always like uncomfortable in like in social anxiety and those things. Uh, but in the kitchen, I feel safe with my cooks, with my team. Um, I, 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 I have like lots of teams in, in my career, of course, um, uh, teams that I made. I choose one by one them. Uh, most of my kitchens are filled with weirdos. That's why we have so much fun, like you say, like 
the rejects, you know. Uh, people like you not know, usually have a great curriculum. Uh, like people like it's reject from other other restaurants. I take them and I try to give them a space of creation, a space where where they can feel her, they can speak freely. Because I, even though I am the CDC and the chef or the boss or whatever name, uh, they can speak freely. To me, they can apart their ideas. I will listen to that and say yes, good or no because of this. But there's always a relationship. It doesn't matter if just it's your first job or if you have hundred years in the kitchen. We always have to learn from the people we have around us. They are around us to teach us something. Maybe to, we are not uh, wide open. In, to see it, but they are for that. They are there for that. I love that. I love my teams. And it's, it's my comfort place, the kitchen with this group of weirdos. <laughs> love that. And, you know, it is something that I can honestly say. I mean, here I am. I'm traveling in a country that I hadn't been in before, Argentina. Mm -hmm. And I walk in to a place I've never been before, and I'm instantly comfortable. I'm mm. instantly comfortable. Yeah. And I can see the That's fun the that you guys are having, and you desire to be part of that. And the name of your restaurant is Raise, right? And it does. It raises your vibration. It raises your mood. It raises your desire <laughs> to stay there. It is such an apt name. So anybody who's traveling to Buenos Aires should definitely find you because <laughs> you're not going to feel like you're traveling somewhere. You're going to feel like you're home the moment you walk into yeah. the restaurant. Hi, I'm your host, Amber, and I am here with Austin on the Heart Leader podcast. We are so grateful that you are tuning in to be with us. To never miss an episode, take a moment right now to click the subscribe button below and give us a like so we know we're creating content that you really enjoy. That's our idea. That's, that's, the, that's the whole idea. You feel comfortable, you, you relax, and just for a few minutes or the time you want to be with us, uh, you just have to relax and concentrate on the food uh, the quiet music and the good service at the table, the chair, I don't know, just sit and chill and enjoy the food because we are making it with so much love. So much love, Amber. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have no idea. We choose every, we have in our lines, in our kitchen, and the line is where you have all the ingredients and we're going mixing and finish the dish. We have like, uh, like cherry tomatoes, for example. Like lots, but, but lots, and we choose one by one. This no, you not you, uh, you. That kind of weird we are. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love it. <laughs> Even though we eat uh, the food of the staff, and, and in many places uh, that I've been working, like you don't give the 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 staff. Uh, I mean the good stuff. You know, um, you just prepare. Spaghetti, and give it to the guy. Uh, but we're not. <laughs> we prepare We make food for us because we are chefs. We are cooks. So why we can give it to the people, people that with whom we spend more time, even with than with, with our, our families. We spend a lot of time together. So we make great food for, for the staff and great food for everyone who comes near to us. Maybe sometimes it's the guy, the delivery guy that comes with the tomatoes, we comes with the spinach or everything. It's the time to eat. We are serving the food. We want to stay. Sometimes the, the guy stays. Sometimes the guy, no, I have a schedule in those. But sometimes they stay and eat with us. We always have one or two dishes extra for the random people who come by. They are not customers, of course. <clears throat> but we treat them like that. And why do you do that? I, I mean, if you're doing, 
what you're allowed to do. When you have to, I don't know, like, don't give it all, all the time. It's, it, makes, it makes me feel so happy, so good uh, to choose, like I say, tomato, cherry tomato, one by one uh, for, for you, for all the people who come to the restaurant. Why can I do it for the people who work with me, the people I lay down, the people uh, I trust, uh, the people I want, I love those people. So it's the same. I have to do it. If I don't do it, I will, I will be lying to my co-workers. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds like it's an extension of your soul, really, and an extension of the love that you have just for what you do and the people who are around you. You put the pieces of your soul in everything. I, I, I don't know if the pieces of your soul is the right, uh, but energy, pieces of your energy, the energy that constantly I like, um, another word, I'm like a uh, electric station or something that always creating electricity. And I, I have this from since I was a child, uh, with the cooks, with the recipes, I'm always changing it, Ch always changing all. Uh, no, we're not using that, we're using that now. We're not changing ingredients, changing procedures. Uh, I write, so I all the time writing, uh, I, Musicians, am I always thinking on a song or a lyric from a song? Uh, like my head runs very, very fast, and my body sometimes can keep it up. So <laughs> I try to do it. Now, I know one of the things that you mentioned when I talked to you in the restaurant was that mm. if someone in the restaurant is having a bad day, not out of a oh, disciplinary yeah. thing, just out of a desire to honor the food and the energy going into the food, you'll let them leave until the energy balances. Can you kind of talk through that? Like, what is the, it's, as the chef de cuisine, why would you want to be down a, a staff member? Because um, I never, I there's just a few rules in my kitchen. Uh, one of them, uh, one of the first is we never compromise the food. The food is the the thing that uh, give us this moment to be together. So uh, we have to give a hundred percent of your focus on what you're doing. If you can't, because I don't know, your cat died, uh, you have a ill relative or something, you can concentrate. I don't want that energy in my plate. So from my heart, I told the guy, the staff member, go home, recover yourself. Uh, when you're whole again, when you're strong again, come back. We'll always be waiting for you. But now, today, you are not having a good time here. And if one of us is not having a good time, that can make us all have a bad time and I don't want that. It's, it's my comfort place, the kitchen. I want to be happy in the, um, and, and it's okay. Uh, it's not like you say, it's not a disciplinary measure. It's like uh, a human measure, I think. It's the, the kind thing to do. If you're not okay, if you're not good, go home, recover. Go or home or whatever you want, but don't be where you don't want to be because of obligation or payment. I won't discount the day. I won't cut the hours. I, you made here. I go. I'm telling you to go. So I will pay you anyway, but don't mess with my food <laughs> <laughs> in a friendly kind of way, no? <laughs> yeah. But yes, it, it's, a, it's, it's a rule. It's a rule I have like. 10 years ago or something. Many, many times uh, I have to, uh, have to do it. I have to get a cook and take it out from the side of the kitchen and say, look, you're not good. You're, you're, you're a great cooker and you're not uh, fulfilling your destiny. You are off battery. 
So go and recharge and come back when you're ready. We'll be here. There will be another customer. There will be more food to cook. So go, man. Go, go, go in peace and come back when you're ready. It's, I think, I think it's, it's a great rule. I don't know. I'm proud of it. <laughs> I feel proud of it. Sometimes think- it's hard because, because we, because we have, sometimes we have like a lot of customers, lots of work and two hands are a lot inside the kitchen. But uh, the team understand that because one of those days, any of that, only any of us could be that guy that's not having a good time. And when we or when I be that guy, I would love my, my, my boss to say to me, go and fix your stuff and come back when you're ready. Uh, I would love to someone say that to me. And I respect that guy. And I, when, I, when I came back, when I come back, I will back with more strength and more love for the thing I do. And that's the important thing. And I noticed, I noticed in, in every one of the, the guys I, I sent home, when they came back, they come back like, ah, they want to eat the world. They want to do more. They want to help their friends. They want to they, they co-work. They want to clean harder. They want to organize better. They want to rotulate better. They want everything. Because the kitchen, it's a very hostile environment in general. And at my kitchen, uh, I, I, I think they always be like an island in that chaos that, that is around the kitchens. And it's like an island. And when you get to my shore, you will never want to live. <laughs> and that's a good thing to hear. Because, yes, I have heard of the other. <laughs> it, kitchen can be a very <laughs> challenging place, a very stressful place. And that's not what I witnessed yeah. in your kitchen. So can no, you no, tell no. us I, about... I grew up in a French. Oh. Sorry, sorry. No. no, please. Yeah, French kitchen? French kitchen. So Ooh. you're working and you're with a guy screaming from one part of the kitchen, another guy whispering to you, you're not good. You're not good. You will never be good. That's what you call a brunoir court. That's not brunoir. And all the time, all the time, like years of that. And always thinking, I love to cook. When I get to the head chef of the kitchen, I will never be like this. I will never be like this. Maybe. <laughs> it took me a good. long road. It was a long road, but I think I'm a good chef. A chef being boss. I think I'm a good boss person. I'm like shoulder to shoulder with my with my guys, my guys and guys, my, my team. And and I always been a weird. I always be a weirdo. And the weirdos I I see how and I was the thing is, is like in the kitchen, I always, I always be a weirdo, but I am a shy weirdo. So I am sad. I don't speak. I don't show my weirdness into the, to the guy. So I think that's why I survived that long, this long. Um, in the other case, that the, I see how the weirdos being treated in the kitchen. And I never like that. I say, that guy's just like me. Think what I'm thinking. So that guy deserves an opportunity. That guy, maybe her comfort place is the kitchen. So that's why I get the, these kitchens from the last 10 or 15 years. All my kitchens are filled with weirdos. And then when I leave the kitchen and go to other place and start a new process, I love that. I love to rear take a place that is going down and raise them and make the people happy and the, the people make the, the staff wake up in the morning and say, well, I have to go to work and not say, oh, got to go to work. You mean? You know what I mean? That thing is what I love to do in the, in the staff. Um, like 10 or 15 years ago, I started with this thing of recruit all the weirdos. And I love it. I have so much fun. So, so much fun. 
And that's a beautiful thing because then others feel it. And I love the quote from Steve Jobs. It was a commercial, I think. Here's here's to the crazy ones, the square yeah. pegs and the round holes, because we are the ones that change the world, right? Ooh. Of course. And so you are just out changing the culinary world. It's a hard, it's a hard war, it's a hard battle. Uh, of course it is, but I'm doing it with a smile, so bring it on. Yes. So, Danny Pardo, if somebody was looking to help you in that journey and they wanted to find you to eat at your restaurant to get to know more about you how would they do that we know that you're shy so you're not going to be out there doing a lot of these types of discussions but if they wanted so. to <laughs> so i'm very honored <laughs> number one that i got to have this talk with you but if they wanted to learn more about Ray's or to eat there or to just know about your cooking, how could they do that? Uh, well, they can find me in my Instagram. I have one just now. It's Fire Living Me, all in one word. Uh, it's my Instagram. I will put in. I will put there my food. Uh, I don't know what else because I'm brand new in Instagram, even though we are 2024. I'm brand new in Instagram, so they can get me there. They can write me an email. Uh, that is properly uh, email. I mm -hmm. um, don't know. Just come to Ray's. Uh, we're in Buenos Aires. Uh, we're one of the greatest, greatest um, vegan restaurants in this great, great city, in this great, great world. So from here, I'm some days, I, sometimes I'm at day, some days I, I'm at night. All this week I'll be at night. Uh, it's so fun the night. The night is so, so fun. I love it. Uh, but the day have this, this chill movement. It's like more relaxing, everything. Everything is like going through, I don't know, like it, like a tube, it's like going so smoothly. And the night is more crazy because there are more, a lot of, lot more of people. And I love, I love the the wood, the wood shift. But well, yeah. they will recognize me, but the hair, and I don't know. <laughs> I love it, and yes, um, from what we learned, Buenos Aires is very focused on meat. And so the fact mm. that you have such a solid vegan restaurant, that is noteworthy as well. No. Amber, if I told you, we are like the first country uh, importing uh, horse meat. Horse meat, such a beautiful animal. We wow. put it like, we're the first, part, like we kill like so many horses by minute, cows, yeah. chickens, oh man. Oh man, don't want to talk about that because that made me so angry. <laughs> yeah, but, wow, that's a yeah. side discussion. So, the Argentinian guy, if you don't put meat in your plate, they don't know they are eating. And so I, I, they say, "Where's the food?" They told to me more of once, "Where's the food?" Because there is no dead animal in in the in the plate. They say, "Dude, shut up and eat." And then I changed the mind, but man. Come on. But part of that is the cooking that you're creating that is helping mm -hmm. that awareness. So when you can have something that is that sustaining and tastes that great, that, mm -hmm. I mean, who can argue when there's something that magnificent on the plate? So <laughs> I just have to give commendation where commendation is due I know here in my country, it's been, you know, individuals are willing to test it out, but mm -hmm. vegan and vegetarian restaurants have had their own difficult plight. But here you are, chef de cuisine at a at a vegetarian vegan restaurant in a city that prides itself on meat, and you are making strides. So here's to the crazy ones, right? Here's for the crazy ones. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're taking the world. Kitchen yes. by kitchen, we take the world. <laughs> exactly. And I will give a firsthand testament to how amazing the food was. It really was. So thank you thank for you. allowing me to take part in it. I'm so thankful. Thank you, Amber. Absolutely. And to all the individuals that are in all the countries who are watching us, I know you travel. So if you do find yourself in Buenos Aires, find Danny. He is definitely worth meeting and tasting his food. It is incredible. And Danny, <laughs> thank you for agreeing to be on this podcast. Again, I know it's interesting. Some random woman walks up to you in your restaurant and is like, I love your food. I love your vibe. Will you be on my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you I love the weird. I love the weird though. <laughs> <laughs> I fit that yeah, category. <laughs> the crazy right. ones, like you said. Exactly. Well, I am sure we will stay in touch, but I'm going to sign off of the podcast for now and we'll make sure that everybody has an opportunity to find your restaurant, find your Instagram. And if you're open to it, we can even put your email out there so that they can get a hold it's of okay. you. Like, yeah, it's okay. Okay, perfect. Well, hold on one second. I'm just going to stop our video here and we can okay. keep chatting.